we are continuing with our price theory and we are on utility and uh, utility and the demand curve so we said there is a relationship between utility and the demand curve that a person who is demanding something usually measures the utility he or she is to get out of the commodities to buy so if he measures and realizes that the, the commodity has high utility then it will be ready to pay a high price so usually the utility that you are going to get from a commodity is usually uh, um, usually it responds to the price that you are ready to pay for a commodity and because of this as i said earlier that he, this word willing means to buy something the driving force behind the willingness is the utility your willingness to buy something is depending on the utility that you expect to get from a product if the utility is low which you are going to get from a product then you are your willingness to pay the price stated is going to be affected therefore we say that the utility, marginal utility, has a direct uh, relationship with the demand curve. Marginal utility and the, the demand, the demand curve. It has a direct relationship. They are related because of that word willingness why are you willing to pay this amount of money you are willing because of the satisfaction you're going to get from this product that you are buying if the satisfaction is measured and the value which you hope to get from that product is low then your willingness to pay the set price is going to be affected this means that when we draw a diagram like this, here we put quantity, and here on the y-axis we put price, stock, YouTube. Because marginal utility is measured in the YouTubes, or the utility is measured in the YouTubes. So this demand curve it slopes downwards from left to right is showing us that when the utility is high for this first unit of output the consumer is willing to pay a high price or a relatively higher price why because the utility is high if you give you get an uh, you, you are to give an example if you are so hungry or if you are yes if you are so hungry and you are somebody is saying something when you want to buy when you are going to buy this thing which you want to eat to kill the hunger to solve the hunger problem that first plate, plate of food which you are going to buy they can tell you this first plate costs 4,000 shillings. You tell the seller or the hotel that please bring that plate. You bring it, you are paid 4,000 because you are so hungry and the satisfaction you hope to get from this is very high. You are ready to pay 4,000 shillings. After eating that plate, the waitress can ask you, may I bring a second plate? There is that common question you ask. If you give it to me at 3,000 shillings, I can take it. If that chance is there, and this person brings that second plate, you will see the 
the first one you paid the four thousand because you are very hungry and you wanted to kill the hunger. The second one, after you have got some satisfaction, you are willing to pay a lower price if you have taken the second place. Now, that means if this person brings the second, you eat and you really feel you are satisfied. Not so satisfied, but you are satisfied. Say, can I bring the third one? You are ready to say, no, but if it is 2,000, I can buy it. You can bring it. Then he brings it. You sit down. You eat. Now, your utility is going down. As it goes down, your willingness to pay the price keeps on reducing. Now, if he wants to give you the fourth plate and says, can I bring the fourth plate? You will say, even if it is at zero cost, I can't take any more. Meaning that the marginal utility has reached now zero. You are not willing to pay any price if it is at zero. You are not willing to pay any price because the utility has gone down. The marginal utility has kept on going down. And as it goes down, you are willing to pay less and less of the commodity. I'll give another example. Why am I emphasizing this? Because it's very important to analyze the consumer behavior. Assuming you have a show, this place we go to theater and watch. If the first time they tell you that play is very interesting, or that film is very interesting, and if you see it, you see how good it is, how interesting it is, you are willing to pay 4000 for the first entrance. The second, after watching it very well, somebody comes and says, I hear that play is very good. Can we go and watch it? Say, I saw it. Please let us go. Unless I'm to pay 3000 that's when I will go. Then you go, you escort your friend, you watch it, you enjoy it again. Then the third time you say, somebody comes, please escort him, you escort him, so and so. You should also go with me. Say, unless I'm to pay 2000 that's when I can enter that play or that film again. Time comes when you say, even if it is free, I don't need to watch it. I've watched it enough and it is no longer interesting to me as it interested me in the first place. So, marginal utility keeps on going down. As it goes down, you are willing to pay less and less of that commodity or the experiment you are willing to pay less than what you paid in the previous uh, quantity or the previous product. So, when it is this, marginal utility is that high. Why are you pay, paying this high price? It's because the utility or the utility is still high. Now, if they bring the second item, second quantity, you are not willing to pay that high price you paid earlier. Why are you not willing to pay the second price? At the, I mean to pay the same price because your utility has gone down. Now your willingness is going down. So this willingness keeps on reducing as the utility, as the satisfaction expected from the product keeps on reducing. So now you decide that let me take the third uh, output. So you go to two, three. Two, three, you are willing to pay P3. It's the same output, same product, same quality. But because your satisfaction, your utility is diminishing, your willingness to pay for that product reduces. When it reduces, you can only take it, consume it when its price has gone down. You cannot pay that price which you paid when you were taking the, pro the, the product the first time. The first time you are consuming it, you are willing, seriously, to take that product. But after you have consumed and consumed, then it is done. That's
That's why we say here, when majority tech is high, you are willing to pay a high price. When majority tech goes down, you are willing to pay a lower price. So, your demand for the commodity goes down. At the highest point of the demand curve, the majority tech is high. At the lowest, it keeps on reducing. So, majority tech keeps on going down. It was very high at first. You are willing to pay this. It goes down. You are willing to pay this. It diminishes. It goes on diminishing. It can even extend to zero. When it reaches zero here, it means you are not willing now to part with any money. That's when you say, unless it is free, that's when I can take it. But if it is paying, I will not pay that amount of money, which I paid at first. You paid that amount of money uh, at first because it was having high marginal utility. So that is the relationship. Majority that keeps on going down as the uh, as you consume more and as you consume more and the majority is going down that means you are willing to pay less than what you paid with on the previous item so that is what we call the relationship between majority and the demand curve the demand curve is sloping downwards and this sloping downwards is indicating that at first the price is high, majority is high. There's no way you are going to pay a high price unless there is high marginal utility. That's why if you are a seller, if you are dealing in these products, you have to be keen. At what time are you selling? Are you selling at the time when majority of the consumers is very high. If you realize that the majority has now gone down, to encourage these people to buy for you, from you, you have to lower the price. You have to keep the price low so that you can have more commodities sold. Why? Because the majority of that product, the consumer has diminished, has gone down. That is the relationship uh, between marginal utility and the demand curve. So, still I will go back to remind you, these words willingness ability and time, given time. Now, they are very, very important when you are analyzing marginal utility. Utility changes over time. The marginal utility keeps on changing over time. As you consume, as time passes and you are consuming, over time, the marginal utility goes, goes down. Your ability to pay, that is from your work, from what you have. But if you have the money, you have the ability. These two are very important. At that time, what is your willingness? This willingness is brought by the utility satisfaction i'm willing to buy this computer because it is going to help me so much after buying it and it does the, all the work that you want to be done if they say we are selling a second computer say now this computer has served most of what i wanted unless you reduce the price from one million one million to six hundred I may buy it. Time may come when you say, even if that computer is a hundred thousand, I don't need to buy it because I'm not going to use it. There's no purpose for it. There's no utility. The moment you say no purpose, it actually means there's no utility for that commodity, for that product. So that is what you have to know. So that is the relationship between utility marginal utility and the demand curve and as i said utility is very important when we are analyzing the concept of consumer behavior
consumer behavior depends so much on the utility the products he has. The products he is consumed have to him. His willingness to pay for a product will depend on the satisfaction he is to get from that product. If the satisfaction is low, the consumer will not buy. If you, the seller, you want him to buy, you make sure you lower the price. Because at that lower price, the utility has gone down. So you are now encouraging him to take the product, but whose utility is already down. Actually, you may be surprised that after paying this price, you can take this first output in the shortest time possible. You give him the second plate of food. The time taken will be long, longer. When you give him the third one, he can take almost five hours taking that food. The first one, you take it very fast because you treat it as high. And you even pay the high price. Now that over time, in a given time, you are not willing to take more. I can only accept to buy when the price has been reduced. Why? Utility is down. Now, from there, we have to move to another area. Still under price load. This whole thing is under price load. Price load is a basic topic that you cannot miss. That you should understand. When we are doing all this, the major thing is to understand. It is to understand the concept of tax theory. It is the basic topic that we need for the rest of the topics in economics. That's why you have to move first of all slowly so that you grasp all the concepts that are necessary for you to understand other topics. Now we are going, we are moving to what we call consumer surplus. Consumer surplus. Consumer surplus. What is consumer surplus? That is the, uh, a question which uh, you may ask. What is consumer surplus? Sometimes students confuse the surplus to mean that the consumer has got a lot of things to consume and he has even a surplus above what he is supposed to consume. That's what sometimes uh, some students take it to be. However, this is not the case. When we talk of consumer surplus, we are talking about something else, not excess of what the consumer has. So, whenever you are talking about consumer surplus, we say this is the difference. This is the difference between what the consumer is willing to pay for the commodity and what he actually pays for the commodity. I repeat, consumer surplus refers to the difference between what the consumer, the price the consumer is willing to buy the commodity and what he actually pays for that commodity. What are we seeing here? So we are saying this is difference between what the consumer is willing to pay for the commodity and what he actually pays, pays for the product or the commodity. Let's call it the commodity. What he actually pays for 
the commodity. And we say this usually occurs when the consumer is willing to pay a higher price than what the market price offers for the product. If I may repeat, it is a difference between what the consumer is willing to pay for the commodity and what actually the market offers for the product. This surplus comes as a result of the consumer finding the price being lower than the price he was willing to pay for the product. So this difference is market price, market price is lower than the willing for the product. And what do we mean by this? This is market price. I live home. I'm going to buy a pair of trousers. I'm going to buy a shirt. Let me take the shirt. I'm going to buy a shirt. When I'm leaving you home, in my mind, I'm willing, because I know the kind of shirt I want, and what it is going to satisfy me, what it is going to help me with, what it is going to provide me with, I'm going to use it for a party, for a wedding, and so on. So it's a valuable shirt. So I say, I'm going to the market, ready to pay 20,000 shillings for the shirt. But when I reach the market, I ask the seller, how much is this shirt? And he tells me, sorry, he tells me, this is the trend this side. He tells me the price is 15,000. This difference, this one is lower than this. What I have found in the market is it's a lower price than what I was willing to pay. My utility was measured in this. I had given utility, attached the value in my head that 20,000 is for the shirt. 20,000 is what I'm going to spend on the shirt. Now, when I go to the market, I realize that it is 15,000. This difference here of 5,000 is what we call consumer surplus. It is what is called the consumer surplus. The consumer is making a saving of 5,000. He wanted to, not wanted, he was ready to pay Five two thousand thousand for the shirt. When he reaches the market, it is at fifteen. That difference which you have mentioned is the difference between what the consumer is willing to pay for the commodity that is the twenty, and what he actually pays for the commodity that is the fifteen. The difference is the five thousand. And we normally add on if you are looking at the consumer surplus. It happens when the consumer finds the price lower than what he was willing to pay. Not when he finds a higher price, but when he finds a lower price than what he was willing to pay, then he has a consumer surplus. This is his surplus now. He had budgeted for it that my shirt is going to cost 20000 Now you have 5000 as your surplus, as money that has remained, money which you were willing. Now you can use it for other things because you found the price lower than the market price lower than what you were willing to pay for the commodity.
So the consumer surplus looks at uh, when you're talking about consumer surplus, we are talking what we look at is what the, your willingness. What are you willing to pay? So we say consumer consumer price and then marketing price and then you make what we call a saving you save some money what are you willing to pay I'm so so thirsty if I can get a bottle of water around this place Two thousand. I'm ready to buy a bottle of salt, a bottle of water at two thousand. So two thousand is your consumer price, which you are willing to pay to part with. But you find that the bottle of soda, I mean of water, is one thousand five hundred. What have you saved? You have saved five hundred shillings. And this is what we call the consumer surplus. It's what we call the consumer surplus. This consumer surplus is very, very important to the consumer. I still repeat, this only occurs when the consumer finds the price being lower than what he wanted to pay not wanted what he was willing to pay for the commodity that's when we get the consumer surplus and this consumer surplus it has a diagram it has a diagram that consumer surplus which is uh, very important for you when you are illustrating it Remember, we are looking at demand, demand curve. So, almost all diagrams we are drawing they are related to demand. So, this is the demand curve. This is price. This is quantity to be consumed. Don't forget the origin. Now. This consumer is going to buy a variety of commodities, different types of commodities, and not uh, amounts, not, not types, but um, different amounts of commodities. This man lives home. This is his demand curve. His demand curve starts from there up to down. He is willing to buy the commodity at different prices depending on his utility don't forget the word utility but when he goes to the market I'll use uh, the example I've given he is willing to pay anything above 1500 This one, if we put it in the figures, it is 1,500. We are looking at the bottle of water. He is willing to pay 1,500. And that is one bottle of, bot of soda. Now, this demand curve of his, depending on his utility, all these are giving him different utilities. This man was to consume two one uh, sorry two 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 one two three. If he is to consume 
this this one may be two thousand two thousand four hundred this one is two thousand eight hundred depending on his utility the first photo here is willing to pay two thousand eight hundred two thousand eight hundred the first bottle is too thirsty. If says, but if they bring me the second bottle, I'm ready to pay two thousand four hundred. The third bottle, I'm ready to pay two thousand shillings. But when it goes to the market, there is no first, second, third. They say all bottles they cost one thousand five hundred. What does it mean? That if you was to take the first bottle at 5,500, 1,500, his surplus on the first bottle is going to be 1,300. His surplus, because he's buying all these at the same price of 1,500, then his second one, it is 900. I hope he's right. 900 shillings that is his surplus his surplus on this one is 500 now if this man was to buy all the four bottles of of, of soda if he was to buy this is supposed to be if he was to buy all because this one is now what we call the market price This is what he has found in the market. Market price is 1,500. But this man, with his utility, he, is ready, he was ready to take these four bottles. The first one at this, the second one. So he has actually taken four bottles. But the first one was giving him this surplus. The second one, this. The third one, this. The fourth, there is a zero. There is no surplus. So he totals up the total surplus on the four bottles. It is uh, zero zero. This is zero seventy two thousand seven hundred shillings. This is his consumer surplus. If he's to consume the four bottles at the price of one thousand five hundred, it means that looking at each bottle surplus. The total surplus is 2,500. That's what we call the consumer's surplus. So, he has bought four bottles. He has bought four bottles at 6,000. Four times one of five. But he was willing to spend on the four bottles 8,700. Meaning, that he has got a surplus of this. We are going to look at a calculation at one time, but uh, very soon. But all this is called this is generally part. We call it the consumer surplus. That is the consumer surplus. This person is ready to spend all these on the four bottles we have indicated but he finds the market price is at 1500 meaning that the other three bottles they have each one has surplus but different different levels of surplus why is it different because each bottle taken at a particular time in a given time is giving him different utility different satisfaction the first one gave him a very high utility, so he was willing to pay one, I mean, 2,800. After taking the first one, the thirst reduced a bit, so he became, it, he was willing to take it at 2,400. Then the third one at 2,000. Then he takes the fourth one at 1,500. You see the price is going down, marginal utility is going down. As it goes down, then the surplus also keeps on reducing. So this is what you're going to find 
with this consumer under what we call the consumer surplus. The consumer surplus is uh, with the that is the diagram for the consumer surplus. Uh, then what we are moving on to at this time is the calculation. The calculation of the consumer surplus. Uh, we are going to have uh, a table. We are going to have a table 